Hi all my Ali Pallies and thank you for tuning in today. Now I had a bit of a brainwave last night about a series that I'd like to start. Now if you don't want to hear all this introduction and hear me gabbing on then I will put a timestamp to the start of me doing the swatches and demonstrations. But um, somebody commented on a first impression video that I did nine months ago last night and it made me think basically because one of the criticisms that's often lodged at youtubers is that they put out all these first impressions and then people never hear of them again um, and they don't get follow-up and i am guilty of that absolutely um and let me explain a little bit about what youtube and why that often happens um it's not an excuse but an explanation so um, when you're starting up a channel and you're trying to build up your views and your subscribers, um, you've only got to look back at my views and you can see, or anybody's views, that when you do first impression videos, you always get more views. And when you get more views, you get more subscribers. And as you all know, I'm really trying to get up to a thousand, not because of anything because I'm not earning any money out of it and I don't want to but just because I want to get back to screening lives on this camera which is better um, and is less temperamental I don't need to use my Wi-Fi and it go blurry and all of that so I really want to get up to a thousand once I get up to a thousand I really you know I don't care I just to me I respect loyalty and that's far more important to me so, but it, there is absolutely no doubt about it that when you do first impression videos, especially of new products that have just been released, you get a lot of views and with the views come subscribers. Um, which is why we build up so many makeup items as well. And that's another criticism lodged. So anyway, it made me think, right, and when I had this this comment as well last night on a um, first impression video i thought i really need to start doing some updates um and never mind the views i can link the first impressions back to this and vice versa but actually you want to know how i'm getting on with the products so i'm going to start a series and i'm going to call it lasting impressions um and it's going to be interesting for me as well because um, there'll no doubt be some on the way and I'm going to pick one at random. I've picked one specifically today because I got the comment, but otherwise I'm just going to pick one at random. Um, it'll be interesting for me to actually see if there's a product I've stopped using and why. Sometimes it's not always because you didn't like it, but because other things have taken over and you've just forgotten about it. And when you discover, rediscover it again, you realise, hey, this was brilliant. Why did I forget about it? Other times there's a reason. So it's going to be really, really interesting for me to work this out. But the first impression that I wanted to go back to today was one that I filmed nine months ago. Um, and so this is my first lasting impression um, series coming to you. Okay. So let's get going. Okay, so as I said, I'm going to link the first impression below. But the the first impression that I did nine months ago was of three items from Charlotte Tilbury. And it was the Magic Foundation in a new shade. There were a few new shades, which I'll tell you about in a minute. The Genius Magic Powder and the Magic Away Concealer, okay? So this is really easy to give you an update on this first one because I actually have used these products a lot since I got them um, and can tell you an awful lot about them. They've not been buried away. Uh, just to give you an idea, my Magic Foundation has nearly, it's, it's nearly, there's about a third left. You can't really see it, but there's about that much left. Um, because I don't use it every day, and I'll tell you why in a minute. My Magic Away concealers 
one of them is empty but you can see that's how many I've got since because I love it and my genius magic powder I now have in two shades and I'll tell you more about that so let me first go on to the magic foundation now this wasn't new because Charlotte bought out magic foundation quite a long time ago long before I started watching her um, but it was a new shade and I was very excited about this new shade because I had not been able to get a foundation that I was happy with in Charlotte Tilbury's Magic Foundation. Five was the right undertone, seven looked too yellow, eight looked too dark, six looked too grey and I was never ever happy so I was always getting um, samples and mixing them. And then this came along, 6.75, and I was so overjoyed because it felt like a really good match for me. Now, it's really interesting. I'm going to show you this. Because before then, I'd, been, I'd used shade 7, and then I'd been talked into getting shade 5 by a different makeup artist. Um, there was a lot of variability between makeup artists and what colours they suggested to me in store. I have to say that. Um, so I I basically got a shade, shade 7. I'd used the whole bottle, but I was never really that happy with the colour and often used to mix it. Then I was talked into getting shade 5, which felt like the right undertone, but I always felt I had to add a lot of bronzer because it was too light for me. Um and I wanted to just show you um, the difference between these colours so that you can see. So for reference, I am NC35 in MAC Foundation. Now, I found a sample of Magic Shade 7. And I just tested this out before I came on because it's really interesting. So I swatched these on my hand and I'm going to show you what they look like on my hand. So that is shade seven in Magic Foundation, all right? And then I swatched shade 6.75 next to it. Now shade five is a lot lighter, similar undertone, but a lot lighter. So this is shade 6.75 next to it. And it was really interesting because I've always said that Shade 7 looked too yellow for me. And yet when I looked at this swatch, I thought, well, that looks just as yellow, just a little bit paler. Um, but it was really interesting when I applied them to my face. So let me just show you. So I put them on my face. Now I'm going to put on shade 7 here. And as you can see, it's okay. I've not blended it in yet. It's okay, but it's looking a bit yellow. <clears throat> And now I'm going to swatch you shade 6.75 on my face. And as you can see that when you put it on your face, it doesn't look that much lighter. And it certainly doesn't look as yellow as on the hand. Right. Um, it just, it looks less yellow, but a very similar shade. And I think that's why this one suits me so well so it's a lesson to all of us that when you're swatching on your hand try it on your face i know that your hand everybody knows that your hand's always a different shade but when you actually put this on your face you can see more what i'm talking about now you can see that as they start to kind of oxidize on the face they look almost the same color except this one's got more yellow in it which is why I like shade 6.75, okay? Now, moving on to shades. The only thing I will say about this is, and it's really frustrating, is when you're moving towards summer and you want to start looking at Light Wonder, I'm gonna show you in the middle here, a couple of things that Charlotte Tilbury, when you go online, use to help you to pick your foundation shade.
Okay, so what you've just seen is my foundation shade. So when I clicked on it and it gives you a little graph of what the equivalent products are in Retoucher, Magic Away, Powder, all the products, all the face products. And then the second image that you will have seen is a chart which has got all the different shades and then the equivalent items next to it. Now I'm just going to show you that chart again and I'm going to outline what I'm talking about. Okay, so when I move down to shade 6.75 in Magic Foundation, there is a blank next to Light Wonder, which explains why I've never been happy and had to mix my Light Wonder foundation. Now, I don't understand why Charlotte Tilbury stopped doing the, the new shades in Magic Foundation, but didn't do them in Light Wonder. They obviously know that there's a gap there, and also for very fair people, she bought out shade 00. And yet, there are gaps next to the light wonder. So my message is, come on, Charlotte Tilbury. You did it, you filled in the gaps for Magic Foundation. Why aren't you following up with light wonder foundation and filling in those gaps? So let's see that happening soon, hopefully soon. All right, so what I will say is, Magic Foundation, I would say I use probably because I use other Charlotte Tilbury products, I use it quite a lot. I'm trying to think of a percentage. I can't think of it. I will tell you that my favorite foundation has got to be MAC Pro Longwear um, waterproof foundation. And it remains so because it is so waterproof and it lasts well. Um, Magic Foundation doesn't tend to be as high a coverage, um, doesn't cover my pigmentation as much. But for some reason, I always come back to it. Um, and also, it's got a lot of ingredients in it that I've got vitamin C, things that help pigmentation over time. So I'd probably say that I use it about 60% of the time, even though MAC is my favourite. I probably use my Charlotte Tilbury because that one is out more often. And there's there's something about it that makes me come back to it. And I just can't put my finger on why. But maybe as I'm doing this today, I'm going to apply this now. And maybe it will come to me. Who knows? So let me just apply this magic foundation. And then afterwards, I'll move on to updating you about Magic Away Concealer. Okay, I'm going to apply this magic foundation with my Laura Mercier um, sponge, which although is, I think, a little bit overpriced, I have used it a lot because of the way that it contours in the face shape. And it has been washed, but you know over time they get stained. Um, it's, I just love the way that it, it kind of contours around the face. So I'm going to apply it with that, and I'll put this part on speed dial. Okay, I'm going to dot a second layer over where my hyperpigmentation is. And as I'm applying this, because I had my MAC foundation on um, over the weekend, and it's reminded me, I think one of the, the, the advantages of this, even though it's not as waterproof as MAC, and it doesn't last as long as MAC, I think one of the reasons that I do wear this and come back to it is because I think this is more skin-like and it looks less made up. I think with MAC, there's sometimes it looks a little bit too perfect and you look more like you've got makeup on. 
and the Magic Foundation has got just a little bit, although Charlotte sells this as her matte foundation, as in she doesn't call it matte, but she says, if you want glow, go for Light Wonder. If you want something more matte, go for Magic Foundation. I think it's just one of those that you can build up on your cheeks, but it still doesn't look too much like makeup. And that's, I think, why I use it more often than the one that's my favourite. I think when I reach for my Mac, it's more when I'm going to be out all day, I want my makeup to stay in place, not budge and look flawless. Um, whereas with the Magic Foundation, I'm not necessarily going to any kind of event but I just want my makeup to look nice and I don't want it to look overly done up. So that is the Magic Foundation. Now, since my video, I think you'll have seen that I had quite a tan um, when I first tried this. And yet it's actually, it's lasted me throughout and I haven't found that I've needed to mix it with shade five too much. So, um, Possibly in the summertime, I might want to start mixing it with seven, but I just don't like the yellow tinge in seven that it gives me. It's just too yellow. And then when you get to eight, it starts to get too orange. And six just looks grey on me. So I haven't tried shade 6.5 um, because that started to look a little bit too light. So I just think that this is a perfect shade for me. So if you're in shade NC35 in MAC and you're not too yellow in terms of your undertone, then because I think this is also less yellow than the MAC um, NC35, then I think you're going to like this shade. Um, as I said before, please do not look at the model as a guide she looked to me to be more of a shade nine or an eight and a half than a shade 6.75. Um, the model that they use to actually advertise this particular shade, it's just so misleading and it would have put me off because I would have thought that this was too dark. So please don't look at the models as guides. Look at the swatches. Okay, so that is... The Magic Foundation and let's now move on to updating you all about Magic Away Concealer. Okay so I think this speaks for itself <laughs> in that I've since that day I bought shade I had shade six that was my first impression then I bought shade five and I then bought shade seven because shade six as I remember telling you, because I did check the video before I started this, shade six was was actually quite brightening under the eyes and it wasn't my skin tone. So in order to go the same shade as my foundation, I felt like you needed to go up one shade. Shade seven is a perfect match for my skin tone and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, I've also wondered about sh trying shade four. I think um, you can now get samples from Charlotte Tilbury, which give you what shades one to eight all together or one to seven, I think it is. So that you only get, a, you get a smaller amount than you used to get when you got these kind of samples, but it gives you more shades to try, which is the advantage. And I think the difference with the Magic Away sticks is, is a lot of the time it's not really about depth of colour. Um, it is about the undertone so they're definitely something that's worth going and trying or getting the sample card i'll actually i'll show you what the sample card looks like and i'll be okay, right so back. this is what the sample card looks like so you can order shades one to eight or shades eight to must be 16 i think um and you get a little bit in each one and i've been testing out shade four as you can see um and when you look at them here, you can see that there really isn't that much difference between some of the shades. It's all about the undertone. 
so it's definitely something to try when you put in your next order okay so let's get on to the magic away what i like about it what i don't like about it you obviously know that i like it because i've used it a lot um i've ordered more and i've used them a lot in my videos i'm going to tell you the things that i don't like about it and the things that make me often reach for other concealers um now what the one thing i don't like about is the packaging it is absolute madness and it's so frustrating so if you have been applying makeup with your hands or you've been applying sunscreen with your hands your hands are naturally slippy and this drives me nuts because once your hand is slippy you cannot pull the lid off even now i had to really tug on that quite hard to get the lid off and my hands are not slippy anymore it really puts me off and sometimes i give up and i go for another concealer just because i can't be bothered to try and pull this lid off the only way that i can get the lid off when i've got slippy hands is to get a couple of pieces of tissue to help me grip on it and then pull it apart they have to do something about that even just to make a little bit of rubberized um something going on the top so that it, you can grip it with your hands if you've got um dexterity problems um coordination problems any difficulties with hand strength do not buy this concealer because it will frustrate you uh, it's such a shame because the product itself is really really good but the packaging needs to be adjusted to accommodate this sorry i forgot to mention an alternative so if you do have coordination problems and packaging is very difficult then what i would suggest as an alternative is huda beauty overachiever concealer it is a very very similar um consistency um and it's got similar ingredients in it they're virtually identical except huda is actually easier to take the lid off also um i've said this before and it's a bit unfair to lodge this at Charlotte because actually she's the only person that has done a good example of this. But Charlotte's brushes are so well shaped in terms of not rolling off the table. She's got, they, they've got a beveled edge and I'll show you what I mean. Hold on. So if you look at this blush brush, you can see about the edge here. So basically what that does is it stops it rolling off the table. Now I have got severe problems with my back causing chronic pain and when things roll off the table and i have to bend down and pick it up it's painful it's physically painful and so i love using her brushes for that reason and i just don't understand why they don't translate them back into products like this because these roll off the table again really really easily and then you have to be going to pick them up so or, this is more of a request than a complaint because I know every makeup company makes concealers that look like this. But Charlotte, please adopt your brilliant design for your brushes with your other products that are cylindrical. Right, please do it. And then they will stop rolling off the table. The third thing is, again, about the design. So when you pull this off, as you can see now, this just looks disgusting, right? Um, it's not very hygienic. Um, you get you get concealer collecting in the lid. You get concealer collecting around it, you know, and then you have to go and clean it off and it all becomes a bit of a waste of product. Um, and I just think they need to review the packaging. But moving on to the product, I have to say that I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, I love the texture of Magic Away and I love all sorts of things about it. So let me get on to why. Now, what have I got here? I've got a little bit of my original Shade 6 from nine months ago. I, I've got a new Shade 6 for when I run out. Um, but as you can see, it's still going. Um, now, what I love about this is that when you put it on and you pat it into the skin, it has got this stretchy feel to it. So if you 
like me have got crepiness around your eyes it gives it a very slight pulling in it feels intensely moisturizing because i get very dry under the eyes and i think it was nicknamed by charlotte spandex in a concealer something like that but as you can see and what i like is it doesn't make me look extra crepey and if anything as i said in my first impression video if anything it slightly removes the crepiness of my under eyes because it's so moisturizing i also like that you don't have to set this um i think when you've got crepey under eyes like me well i'm talking that's what i'm talking about so if i smile you can see that i've got quite a bit of a bag and I've got lines and quite loose skin okay um now if you put powder on that even the fine powders and there are some that I will use um but any powder no matter how fine it is is going to accentuate that so if I can use a concealer without setting it then I do because it just looks better and i find that i can use this concealer without setting it and the other reason that i love this concealer is because i find that it is very water resistant i wouldn't call it waterproof um but it is very water resistant so if my eyes are streaming i suffer a lot from watery eyes it does tend to stay in place um, and it's also very good for using on the upper lids as a base for your eyeshadow because it's got that slightly sticky texture which helps your makeup adhere to it. To it. it does tend to crease on my lids because I've got very hooded lids but as long as I kind of smooth it out before I apply powder to it, it's fine. It doesn't it doesn't tend to crease under my eyes as much, but on my lids, if I do that for a couple of minutes, you will find it starts to to crease. So, and now, so that is shade six. I will show you the difference in the colors in a minute. Now, what I use is shade seven on my face because that seems to be a very good match and here we go again pulling the lid off really can't stand it right so if you see that that is a very good match if anything they could do a seven and a half and it would be even better okay now you can also do some other things now i haven't tried this before but i'm going to try it today um as i'm always saying to you pigment is pigment and tamsin when i went to have my makeup done was saying these make very good contour ones um and i reckon that they last longer than the contour ones and they're slightly cheaper so if you got a shade a couple of shades too dark for you you could always use these as a contour one. Now, what I was going to do is use the um, sample in shade 8 and see how well that contours, which I will do. So let me just show you um, the shades first and then I will do that for you and show you what that looks like. So I've got shades 5, 6 and 7. So if you are medium skin toned, this might be useful for you. If it's not useful, please forward through this section. And I would definitely suggest getting one of these cards, either in shades 1 to 8 or if you're darker in shades 9 to 16. <clears throat> so this is shade 5. So I'm going to swatch these on the lightest part of my arm and show you there. Okay, so let me just do, this is five. And I think you'll be surprised at some of them, how 
little difference there is between the shades. I think there's quite a big difference between shades five and six, as I remember. But no, not, not that different, actually. And then six and seven, I'm just going to put them on my arm so that you can see uh, shade seven is here. Okay, so you've got shade five, shade six and shade seven. And I'm going to take a photograph of that now and put it in between. Okay, I'm really excited to try this because I haven't done yet. So I'm gonna just take this sample of shade eight like this which actually looks scaringly orange but I'm going to put that and on with my fingers because there's not that much there and I'm going to put that on the side with my fingers and actually I don't think it's dark enough to do this but which is very interesting because that looked really dark for me on the sample and yet when I put it on my face it doesn't look that dark at all. In fact, what that would probably be very good at, because it's got a bit more orange in it, is covering up that little scar that I've got on my head. Yes, it is. Look at that. That's perfect for doing that. But it's not, it's not dark enough, really, for me to use as a contour. But I shall nevertheless blend that in. Actually, I'll do it with my fingers because I want to use a setting brush for powder in a minute. So it might give me a little bit of a subtle, a subtle contour. Can you see what I mean now? How it's creased on my lids, but it doesn't crease under my eyes. It's very odd. I think, though, if you look at me looking face on, I have got very very severely hooded lids so I think that amount of creasing in my eyelid that amount of fold is going to cause creasing whatever I put on my lids but it hasn't underneath okay so moving on so that didn't work but it probably would if I went up to because I don't forget, I'm using shade seven, which is my natural skin tone. So if I went up, you'd probably need to jump two shades in order to use as a contour. And this only goes up to shade eight. So if I went to shade nine or ten, that's what I would be looking at to use as a um, bronzer, a uh, sculptor. All right. So next up, I'm going to turn to the Genius Magic Powder. Okay, the infamous Genius Magic Powder that we've all come to know and love as the Smelly Magic Powder. And it was so interesting because I didn't even mention the smell at all on my first impression video. I hadn't noticed it. It was only when I looked at other reviews and I, I tend not to look at anybody else's reviews when I'm doing first impressions because I don't want to be influenced by anyone else or end up repeating what they've said inadvertently. Um, but there is no doubt that this does have a smell that is off-putting and somebody likened it to the smell of raw potatoes. And I think that was the best description I've heard so far. It has never bothered me, but it is quite strong. And it's one of those things, I think smells are very personal. And what some people can't stand, other people don't mind. Um, and smell, it's different types of smell as well. It's not just strength of smell. Certain smells may have a certain association. Um, smell is a very powerful thing. To this day, whenever I go past a freshly painted gloss door, anything with gloss paint, I get a flashback to being in hospital when I was 18 months old. And when I discussed it with my parents, they said 
that they were doing, they were painting the ward when I was 18 months old and I was in hospital. And I still get a flashback. I get a flashback of going to surgery, going to theatre, green gowns, you name it. And I was 18 months old. So smell is very powerful. So it's not for me to say, it's fine, go ahead, get it. I think the only thing that you can do with this is to go and smell it for yourself and decide whether or not for you, you can put up with that smell or not. What I will say is that once you put it on your skin, the smell disperses. I cannot smell it afterwards. It's when you open the pot that the smell is there. Now, the other thing that's worth noting about this powder, which by the way, I have used a lot and you will have seen that in my videos, um, is that um, I've completely lost track of what I'm saying. Just hold on a second. I'll be right back. I'm back. I remembered what I was going to say. So the other thing is worth noting about this powder, which is on the kind of negative side, is that you only get 13 grams of powder, which for £33 is very expensive powder. Now, I will say that, I mean, I've been using it a lot and I've still got loads left. This is my shade two, which I use. There's still plenty left in there. Um, but it is worth noting because if some of you that have been watching me for a while um, saw that I did a comparison with La Prairie powder, which cost £70 to buy, and it ended up being a third of the price of this magic powder per gram of product because you got a lot more for your money. So it's always worth noting the price per gram. This is more expensive, three times more expensive than La Prairie. But of course you have to spend 70 pound to get, get La Prairie. And it depends how often you're gonna use it, of course, and if you're gonna use it in time. So um, that's what I'd say. And La Prairie only do two shades um, and they're very translucent, whereas Charlotte does three. Okay, now, Recently, you will know that I also bought shade one. Now, in my first impression, I was saying, when I swatched shade two, I said, oh, I wouldn't want to go lighter than that. Okay, because when you when you look at it in here, it looks yellow. When you put it on the skin, it looks white. Um, now, I was incorrect in saying that because actually, the difference really isn't that much in the depth of colour of these two powders because they're quite translucent and because they got quite a luminosity to them. Once you put them on your skin, the colour doesn't make an awful lot of difference, but the undertone does. So this is shade one. Now, as you can see, if I put that next to shade two in the pan, you will immediately see the difference between shade two, which is there, and shade one, which is there, okay? So shade two has got a more yellow undertone and shade one has got a more pink undertone. And the reason I got shade one is because it says on the packet and because Charlotte said in a video that shade one is better for putting under the eyes. It's more brightening. So just as you might put a, a fairer colour under your eyes or a pinker um, concealer under your eyes, to brighten up your under eyes. It's the same principle with powder. And I have even considered getting shade three, which again, doesn't look overly dark, just to put round the periphery of my face to do a very subtle contour. Um, I haven't done that yet, but may do so in the future. Now, the way that I apply this magic, sorry, genius powder, magic genius powder, is that what I like to do with it is I'll put it on and I often use it on my entire face and then afterwards I spray it with MAC Prep and Prime. It doesn't have to be MAC Prep and Prime. It could be water. It could be any setting spray apart from the fixing sprays, as I call them, which is by Urban Decay and um, Skindinavia. They're more like a spray that fixes makeup to your face 
as opposed to setting sprays like MAC, which kind of just take that powdery look away and help all your makeup kind of merge into one. Um, so I often put that on afterwards because it really brings out the luminosity in this powder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this. Now, as I've been chatting to you, I just want to make sure it hasn't creased, but I just want to make sure that it hasn't settled. Look, if I show you the side I haven't done, you can see that it hasn't creased. It's creased on my lids, yes, but not under my eyes. And I will dot over my eyes again and uncrease that. And then I'm going to go in with a Real Technique setting brush and shade one, tap it off, and then I pat it under my eyes from the outside in. This is when I'm actually using powder to set it. But as I've said, I quite like using this without. So I'm just showing you this today for the sake of showing it. But I think you can see that this looks equally as nice without setting. But if you're worried that your eyes are going to water or you want it to last, then by all means, this is a good powder, even for your under eyes. Um, some powders I wouldn't use under my eyes because they're not fine enough. This one is fine. And with shade one as well, you can use it kind of as you would a highlighter. So you can do the middle of your face with it so that you've got, you're adding a bit of definition to the face before you've even added stuff like highlighters and bronzers. You're just doing it with powder. And I'm going to take this powder a little bit further down onto my cheeks. Like so. And then... I will pick up my shade two. Just get that. I love applying this with Real Techniques powder brush. Um, if you want a bit more targeted application, then um, you can use Charlotte's um, sculpt brush, the the smaller one. But I love applying it and just dabbing it on to my cheeks with this Real Techniques powder brush. And I just got a whole blob then in my eyes. <laughs> now, if you see, when you apply it, it can take some of that luminosity away. There is a little bit there. But if, like me, you like a bit more of a glow... You want to kind of get rid of the oil around your nose. You want to set your makeup. But you want a bit more glow than that. Then all you do is spray it with MAC Fix Plus. So I'm going to take a picture now before I've sprayed it. And then I'm going to take a picture afterwards. And I'm going to show you the two pictures together. So I'll be right okay, back. And now I'm going to spray my face with my Fix Plus special edition in cherry blossom apparently they don't sell this now so um it's a lovely smell but anyway i'm going to spray my face and i'm quite generous with it so when i first finish spraying i'm going to look a bit wet but i'm just going to come back in about a minute's time Give that time to soak into my skin and you'll see what the finished effect looks like. Okay, I'm back. Now, hopefully you can see now that it's brought out a beautiful glow in the skin. Now, there are some places that you don't want that glow and that's when... I go back in. I've now set my foundation though 
and the, the powder has set the foundation, but it's not looking too powdery. But there are places like round here and up here that I don't want them to glow that much. That's when I would reach for my airbrush flawless finish powder, which as you can see is nearly gone, but I've got the um, big face palette that's got it in. And that's when I go in because this one is a matte powder and I'll go in at the sides and just tuck that in anywhere where I just don't want the shine as much. Just with a setting brush. Because sometimes you can kind of look a little bit too sweaty. And I just put a little bit here as well. Because that's where I tend to have open pores. So you can see I can get the best of both worlds out of both powders that way. And that's how I work it. So I think I can safely say that I've used all the products. Made very good use of them. Um, since my first impression nine months ago. I hope you found this helpful. If you've got any fo following, f let me start that again. If you've got any follow-up questions to this or my first impression video that I haven't tackled yet, please do leave your questions below. You know I love answering them. Um, I'm going to get on now and finish my makeup. Um, and if there's a particular first impression video that you want me to do to, to revisit and do a lasting impression video of then do let me know underneath as well because I will go with if with one that, that you particularly want me to follow up on and this will now be a regular weekly slot okay so take care and have a good day don't forget to like and subscribe and tell your friends about my channel and I'll see you all very soon bye bye Ali Pallies love you all